Welcome, this is Mel Skinner, and we're back with some more Battle Brothers, and we managed to complete our contract, killing the Marauding Greenskins. We had the help of a Noble House here, which made it very easy to complete. Let's see if we got any level ups. No, it doesn't look like it, but I didn't really expect to. We probably didn't get that much experience from that encounter. Okay. There's been a lot of action in this area lately. As a matter of fact, we've got ourselves a Goblin Raider group that's being char uh, chased by a Noble House group. I'm tempted to get involved in this fight, and I think I will, as we have the numbers advantage. And it is Goblin Wolf Riders, and it's time to get some vengeance on these guys. They, they have killed some of my brothers, and it's time to kill them. So, all right, we're going to have some that are trying to go for a flank. Too bad for them that I'm on the flank, so I should be able to respond to this pretty quickly. We're probably going to want to use this high ground against them, so I'll probably array my men for that. And if that's the case, I should probably wait until I get into a better position for that, so that's what we're going to do. Matter of fact, a good number of them moved down here. Uh, there's 12 total, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are down here, so that's almost half of them down here, so... We're going to have to see if my ally can help me out with that. Well, that helps. That definitely helps. Wow, there are pinpoint accuracy there. Well, hopefully we can fill them full of more arrows ourselves. Okay, just passing along here as we need to wait for our front line to establish the line here on the high ground. It's going to be a wait for them kind of mentality. Okay, so this guy's going to go here. That would be three, five, then four for the shield wall. So we're just going to move up. We're going to put our shield wall in place. And then we are going to end turn because we don't really have anything else going for us. Okay, we're going to move up. We're going to put our shield wall up. Ooh, wow, there's a lot of them here. Okay, we're going to try and prevent them from flanking us. I don't know how successful I'm going to be at that. I think what I might do is have this guy go over here. Have Alaric go over here. Oh, crap. We've already moved him, didn't we? No, oh, no, this guy hasn't moved yet. So we move him here. We move Alaric here. We keep this guy where he is. I might even move here and put a spear wall up. That would make him kind of separate and away, away from the rest of the group. But it'd also make the enemy have a real hard time of getting high ground on us. Granted, if we put up a spear wall now, it would be almost just as effective at that. Hmm. Not sure which one's the right move here. I think I am going to go with this, though. I'm going to move here, and we're going to put a spear wall up. Try and keep them off of us. And end turn. Okay, so as I discussed, this guy's going to move here. He's going to continue the shield wall pass by doing that. We're going to put Alaric here, and we're going to shield wall up. Okay, this guy can move up on top of the high ground. And sure, we'll put a spear wall up just to keep them off of us. That will be, be fatiguing, though, so I have to keep that in mind. Okay, Gunther can do one of two things. Gunther can stay where he is, or Gunther, Gunther can move over one space and put up a shield wall. And let's think about this. So if I, if I do that move, I can put this guy here, I can put this guy here, I can put this guy here, and I can put this guy here. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll shield wall up. Okay, our archer's going to step up here. All right, who's the best target? Well, first off, who's the best target is from a shooting standpoint. We've got 54, 47. All right, it looks like 54 is going to be our best shot. And we failed. All right, the, the big problem is what do we do with this guy? Because I don't know if I really want to have him where he is. But the spear wall here should protect us. So honestly, I guess we'll be fine with him being on this extreme flank. And... Uh, you know what? I lie. I'm going to put him 
here. Him here. Are they, uh, he is in threat of them coming in here. Uh, but they would have to brave this, the spear wall to be able to do that. It's possible they'd be able to do that if they if they avoided his attack from the spear wall. They could still get in here and tie up, and that would be bad. But uh, it is what it is. Okay, so that's going to be it for you. You are going to move here. And you are going to move here. We're going to need that banner roughly in the middle of our group to give us that morale bonus. And we end turn. Now we're going to see what happens here. So they're going to start going that way. Okay, so they didn't plan to come in and attack me. Which is interesting. I see why they wouldn't, because we have a good advantage here. But it would also be very foolhardy to engage them. That does mean that my allies are going to get the shaft here, as I will not be assisting them. If this goes that way, but we can fill them full of arrows here as they go past me like this. So 48% chance to hit. All right, well, we'll go for it. Oh, come on. All right, we got at least one hit. All right, we're going to continue to pass here. Well, I mean, that's what they're there for. That's what my allies are there for. They're there to take this fight for us and so far they're doing an amazing job of it so the question is do we want to engage these guys I still don't know what their intentions are I don't know if they're going to come after me or not all right well they've already taken one Goblin Wolf Rider out. I think we stay on the high ground here. I really do. It's the tactically sound thing to do. So I will burn another turn to putting shield walls up. And if they ignore me next turn, I guess I will just come after them. There's no point in putting a spear wall up this turn. I am half tempted to go and try and grab this high ground. Why don't I wait? We'll let that go. Put up our, our shield wall here. Because these guys are much more likely to be attacked this turn. Gunther's going to wait. Alaric is going to come and grab this high ground. Let's see if they try and attack him. If they do, then we can counterattack pretty hard on that. Okay, uh, I cannot put up another spear wall here, though, so we'll just shield wall up to try and remain defensive. I mean, I could have, but it would be to the point that we would be exhausting our men. Okay, we're going to end turn with our backliners, because it's clear we don't have a fight yet. All right, so I'm either going to move Gunther here, or I'm going to move my spear guy there. I guess we're going to move the spear guy just because of the order of the way this is going to work, so we'll just end turn. And I could move Gunther to support this move, which I will do. All right, so they're just going right in for the attack here. They're going to continue for the flank. We're going to wait. Okay, so they did... Grab the bait, but not in the way that I wanted them to. Okay. Well, Gunther can handle this. So, now we're going to put our backliners into a position to help out. I have to keep in mind that this guy can break out of this and try and entangle one of my polearm guys. But, preferably, I'm going to move this guy into engagement over here to form a, a cover for that as well so it's still a risk that I take doing this so okay uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move over this way with this guy start kind of working our way over there move you there we might have a clear shot it looks like we do so we're gonna take the shot might be able to drop one of them. Nope, not quite. Okay. 
Down goes another Goblin Wolf Rider. They're already down to nine here. I think we have lost an ally, though, because we had 32 to start this. All right, uh, I'm just going to pass with this guy. I want to focus on my, my main fighters here for this engagement. So you're going to move here so that we can establish uh, a little bit of defense here. So I'm going to end turn. Okay, so Gunther is going to attack and miss. And then he's going to shield wall up to defend. Okay. Do I come over here with this guy? This is dangerous to do because I could lose a man here. I am going to put the shield wall up. Okay. Here I'm going to wait because I, I'm not positive of what's going to happen here. We're going to go ahead and go with the attack. Okay, we have uh, brought down the dog, which or the wolf, which is, I think, the more key thing here. Uh, I can't help with a shield wall, though. Okay, so... I am tempted to grab this high ground. We've got good armor, and if we grab the high... Oh, I don't have enough action points to do that, huh? Uh, we don't want to be really touching high ground if we can avoid it. But I want to see if they'll take the bait if I go, kind of go for it. I don't think this Goblin Wolf Rider will be able to engage here without triggering, triggering my battle, uh, my battle, what is it, uh, zone or zone of coverage or what have you. And we can put a better wall up here if we move men into position. And this is kind of, uh, just not a necessarily a bait, but uh, it kind of is. And that guy's going to use his dodge to get out of some of that contact. Okay, so this is actually a dangerous move because what he's done is he's moved to try and attack my backliners here. Well, we're going to wait for now. This guy is dead as hell, though. I mean, moving off the high ground, it, yeah, he got out of the zone of a lot of guys so that they're not going to be able to, to attack him maybe as easily, but, uh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and attack. One arrow hit. Two arrow arrows hit. Okay, I'm going to wait here. We still have eight enemies, according to the, the ticker here. But I'm going to assume the enemy did, like, a dual flank moves, which is kind of why we can't see the action up there. Alright, we are going to want to engage here to prevent this Goblin Wolf Rider from doing it, whatever it wants to do. Alternatively, I just move onto the high ground to ensure that that can't happen. But I'm not positive I'd be able to absolutely ensure it. Yeah, sure, we would be able to, because I can move there. This guy can move there. This guy can move back over here. Yeah, we can do that. No problem. We'll just regain the high ground. This guy's not going to be a threat to me. It's a safer move than moving to him. All right. Uh, I'm going to try and kill the goblin so that Alaric is free. But uh, unfortunately, we failed in that attempt. All right. Well, that's okay. We'll just end our turn. So as I was saying, we're going to go ahead and move here. This cuts off the Goblin Wolf Rider over here's attempt to attack me. I am going to pass with Alaric, just for now. Because Gunther can take this hill and attack down on this guy with a pretty good chance to kill him, which is exactly what he did. Okay, so Alaric should be able to get over here and attack next uh, when he acts. So that's good. Let's uh, end our turn. Now, the question I have is, do I want to engage with this guy? And I think that's an, the answer to that is no, definitively. I could tie him up, have Alaric tie him up, and then move one of my polearm guys to sit on top of this hill to attack him. 
And I'm tempted to do that so much that I think I will. I will point out this is a super dangerous move. And you know what? I don't actually have to tie him up with this guy. Instead, we'll just move here. Okay, so now we have to reform over this way. I won't be able to super protect here, but I should be able to at least have a uh, zone of control enough that the Goblin Wolf Rider would have to stop here. But we've seen these Goblin Wolf Riders like teleport through our lines before, so this could possibly be dangerous to us. So we're going to have to get on top of this high ground just as a precaution. All right, so as I said, we're going to get up on top of here so that next turn we'll be able to attack with a good... Uh, We'll get up here just so, again, we don't have any teleporting uh, bad guys. If I move there, I should be able to cover him next turn. And then Alaric is going to move up here. And he's going to throw an attack. And miss. Uh, I was hoping that that polearm was this guy, not this guy. Well, that's that's unfortunate because we don't get the overwhelm penalty. Because Alaric tied him up, though, this should be good. As long as he doesn't get, like, lucky-ass attacks on Alaric and kill him, which would be devastating to our squad. I do have to uh, respect his ability to to step away. So, oh, you know, and we still might go before him, because this guy here is not that guy. So, we're going to continue to pass here. Okay, that guy, oh, good attack there. Okay, there's seven enemy now. Hopefully we can get a hit here. Okay, good hit. Uh, he's taken down. I'm just going to go ahead and pass for now. All right, so we can't see any more enemy. They are out of our line of sight. So we're going to have to wait for the, me the meantime. Uh, I'm going to continue to wait. So there's five left at this point. It's possible the enemy will start running. Depending on... Oh, yeah, four left. And we're not even uh, done with the good guys going here. So I'm going to start scouting to see if we can find the bad guys here. Which, uh, we have no view here. Okay, let's start moving up this way. Okay, there's definitely an enemy in here somewhere in these bushes, but we can't see them because they are in the bushes, which is going to hide them from us. This guy's pretty tired, so I'm going to only do a slight move here so that you can catch his breath a little bit, but still have him moving. Okay. Move up this way. Okay, Gunther's going to move, move here. Okay, Alaric is going to do a bit of spotting here. Still can't see the enemy. Let's see if we can get up on this high ground. No, not quite. That's all right. I'm going to move up in here where it's safer. And... We'll just have you end your turn. Then our archer is going to move right in there in that nice pocket. And because I can't see what's going on, I'm just going to end turn. Okay, well, there's a goblin. He's hopping around trying to get out of uh, probably zones of control. We're just going to wait. That guy's more than likely going to die here. Okay, continue to wait, continue to wait. I, I have to believe that this enemy is here. We don't know that for sure. And I honestly, the only way I probably can tell that is by moving up next to it. So, okay, we're just going to continue to pass here. Okay, another one down. All right, so that's clearly the one attacking from here. That just that just happened right there. 
Okay, well, there's a little bit of damage done. Alright, we can continue to try and scout out the enemy here. Still don't see any. We get up on top of this hill. Still can't see because they're in the bush. Again, I think we're going to have to be right up on them to be able to see them, so... Move up this way. Okay, there goes that one, so... I really honestly have no idea where they are at this point. Uh, and... I gotta believe that uh, these goblins would be running if they could, so... Clearly nothing over here, otherwise wouldn't have made that move. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any clue where they are. I'm going to keep our guys moving, though, with the rest of the group, just so that we don't leave them behind and they get all murdered with a, a battle that's pretty much won here. Our archer's going to move in right there. Okay, it's over. All right, let's take a look at our loot. We get some weapons and some equipment. Go ahead and loot that on up. We'll leave. Okay, well, uh, another nice victory there. Let's see if we can get through this gauntlet area here. As there appears to be a lot of action. Looks like there's a lot of friendlies in the area too, though. So, I don't know if I really have too much to be worried about. Let's just get through here. So this is where a lot of the action is going. I gotta believe there there has to be a, uh, a base somewhere. I'm gonna guess over here, and I'm gonna guess somewhere over here too, because it seems like there's just too much action going on. What's this? Oh, okay, that's a den of the of the undead, so not likely gonna be a base for the greenskins. All right, well, let's just get on the road and get to uh, Wisenhouse so we can get paid here. been pretty successful lately because we've been able to take the aid of allies to help us win fights. All right, so we just got a bunch of gold out of this. Baron Ar Arnold von Thura is having a coughing fit when you return. He glances at you, fisted hand bur borrowed to his lips. Surely your presence is not another bad omen. You shrug and place a greenskin's head on the table, explaining that all of, the, all of them were taken care of. Baron Arnor, Arnulf von Thura. When I say all of them, I mean the one that you were paid to get uh, to paid me to kill because there was a lot of other ones that I ignored. So my illness must have been caused by something else. But what? Maybe it was that undercooked meat I ate, or no, no, I'm pretty sure it's that crazy woman living on the hill. The man pauses, then shakes his head. Ah, no matter. Your pay is being held by a guard outside. It is the amount we agreed to, though feel free to count it. The gods know I may have mis uh, I may have miscounted, I'm going to assume that's meant to say, in my current state. All right, let's go ahead and take that money and go into Weisenhaus. We did manage to get in there just before nightfall. We do have a good relationship in this town, so I think it's good to get in here and get supplies and things. We really don't need food or anything, really. Uh, I am, yeah, I really don't need anything. I mean, outside of the fact that some of the food that we have is going to spoil very soon, I could buy food just to, like, you know, deal with that. But tools are never a good price here, is the downside of, of everything. I could get medical supplies while we're here because they're a good price. And I really don't need them, but eh, why not? We've got gold. Why not? So let's do that. Uh, we can sell some of these goblin weapons that we don't really want. So we'll sell uh, this, this, and this. Okay. So let's go ahead and leave. We have a one skull contract here. I figure I might as well take it. Before we do that, though, I would like to just take a look at our faction relationship. 
So we are now friendly with, with House Thura. And that is very good. So I am going to take this contract. And we'll see what we can get out of it. It's just a one skull contract, so it might not be too much money, but... If it's a gr against Greenskins, we're going to want to continue to take contracts to get the against them to try and defeat them. Okay, Count Yarny Von Thura picks his feet up, kicks his feet up on the table. Any opinions on Greenskin Cell Sword? You, sh you shake your head no. Man totes his head. Interesting. Most say they're afraid or that they're nasty brutes who can cleave a man in two, but you, you're different. I like it. Let's say you go west of uh, this town to... A place the locals have dubbed Shattering Roar Camp. We've sighted a large band of orcs that need scattering. Okay, fighting orcs won't come cheap. 930 crowns. I do want to be paid more for this. Okay, I guess I'm going to get paid 930. Yeah, that's not a lot, but it's just a one skull contract. I'll take it. It is, you know, money in the bank. And it does sound like we are breaking up a camp. So either way you look at it, that's good. Okay, along the road, you come across a handful of soldiers from House Krieger. They tilt their caps at you. Evening, mercenaries. Not sure if you've, uh, you're about to attack. I'm sorry, not sure if they're about to attack. You make a subtle nod toward uh, Thorben. He puts his weapon within hand's reach and nods back. You turn your attention to the soldiers, giving them a friendly wave. Their lieutenant steps forward, grinning. Oi, mercenary! We have little use for you in this world now. Slowly, you... Lower your hand, hovering it above the pommel of your sword. You ask what the man means by that. He laughs. You haven't heard. War is over. The Greenskins were routed from uh, Schwarzwacht just a few days ago. Scouts report seeing them bastards running for the hills every which way, fighting amongst themselves. The orcs killing the goblins. Goblins killing the orcs. Just a full-on rout. So yeah, noble houses need not pay your sorry ass for nothing now because us real soldiers got it under control. Now, why don't you and your pathetic lot clear out of this the way? Us fighters got places to be, understand? Okay. We've got a couple choices here. We can let the heroes of the realm pass or we can have Thorben handle them. Eh, we'll just let them pass. Let them pass. Thorben reaches for his weapon, but you shake your head. The lieutenant nods toward the mercenary. Let's keep that dog on his leash, eh? You fan your arm out, inviting your, the soldiers a passage. They knew they already had. The soldiers gear up, and the lieutenant smirks. I knew you'd make the right choice. We're just having a bit of fun, yeah? You ladies stay tight. Man blows a kiss as he walks by. Thorben stands up looking like someone just sh sh socked his mother. You tell him to sit back down, and he begrudgingly does so. It's all bullshit, these theatrics, but you're not one to lose your temper and get people killed over it. The incident does make you wonder if maybe it's time to turn it all in. The Greenskins are beaten back, and you've made enough money to leave the life for good. And then again, you'd hate to live out the rest of your days wondering what if. Okay, so I think I am going to indeed retire the company. We went through, we got through the end game event. That's exactly what I was looking to do. And I'm pretty pleased with my playthrough and uh, it's been a lot of fun. They've made some changes to the game since I uh, first started uh, this run, but we had the last major update, so I don't expect too many more changes. So any future runs I do, uh, whether it be on my channel or not, we'll be able to take advantage of those things. But let's go ahead and take a look at the end game. Uh, if I were to retire at this point, we've got some money in the company. We've got good equipment in the company. It's time to retire from the mercenary life. Let's see what we get out of that. Okay, so the Battle of Many Names. That's what the scribes called the great clash between all of mankind and the vast hordes of greenskins. You thought those stories were of a bygone age, but the horde of savages pouring over the eastern horizons proved otherwise. This time, the orcs and goblins learned to invade all across the land instead of in one place. Despite their new strategy, the world of man had a new weapon, the mouse's cadets. Perhaps it's just your own pride speaking, but you truly believe your company admittedly 
Greedy ventures proved crucial in turning the tides of green back. And with the greenskins defeated, you found yourself with a pile of gold to retire on, leaving the command of the company in the hands of the best and brightest. Havard, the day teller, retired, retired from fighting, and, well, he keeps working with his hands. Now he's back to laying bricks and carrying hay instead of slaying beasts and crushing heads. He took all his mercenary money to purchase a bit of land and settle down. Well, not the richest man. Word has it that there is hardly a happier man in the realm. He was with you from the start, Enyar, and he was with you in retirement, leaving the company not long after you did. But he wasn't yet done with the fighting life and took up fighting for another company, his own. Having learned so much from your leadership, he is making you... Yeah, he's making you about as proud as any son could. Ironically, he hates the notion of you being a father figure to him, and you always tell him you'd never father a son so ugly to begin with. You keep in touch to this day. Some nights you wake up, sweat on your head, a berserker's growl, fading into the stillborn memories of a dream rendered incomplete. These nightmare nightmares won't leave you alone, proving themselves the ultimate price of your newfound treasures. While the mouse's cadets is doing well, you sometimes wonder if it's best that you were leading it again. In the peace of your retirement, you've learned that the horrors that can grab and kill and our worlds are a world's difference from those which lurk amongst your worst fears. So I managed to get 214 points. I really don't know how good that is in relationship to the grand scheme of things, but uh, I got an achievement for it. I got an achievement also for getting through the end game condition, which was the uh, Greenskin Invasion. So as I said, it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the game. And uh, I think this is one of my longest uh, series that I've had on the channel. And uh, those of you that have stuck through it with me throughout this whole thing, uh, me starting from the first time ever playing the game, really, uh, through the whole thing, uh, it's been a learning process. And uh, I, I very much... Have had a lot of fun, and I hope you guys have too. In any case, this is Mouse Gunner signing out.